Good evening, and welcome to Pax Christi Catholic Church. We gather to worship Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Let us turn our hearts to him in prayer. As we begin our celebration, please stand and greet your neighbor. And join with us in singing Christ Be Our Light, verses 1, 2, and 3. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good evening, Pax Christi. Good evening, Father. And so we've begun another year. Offer a warm welcome to all of our visitors. A warm welcome to all those who are looking for a church home. Ordinary time is no ordinary time because each day, and so today, we have the opportunity through worship, through reverent and enthusiastic worship, we have the opportunity to come face to face with Jesus just as surely as the apostles and John the Baptist do in today's gospel. So let's prepare that we will worship, that we will meet the Lord. Lord Jesus, you came together to, the, to gather nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord said to me, You are my servant, Israel through whom I show my glory. Now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him, and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, the Lord says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to you who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be holy, with all those everywhere who call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John glory to you Lord John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world he is the one of whom I said a man is coming after me who ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. I did not know him, but the reason why I came baptizing with water was that he might be known to Israel. John testified further saying, I saw the spirit come down like a dove from heaven and remained upon him. I did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, on whomever you see the Spirit come down and remain, he is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now, I have seen and testified that he is the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon. Hello, Deacon Ed. Today's gospel gives us a solid transition from our recent Christmas season to our current ordinary time. The first two readings prepare us for this transition and contribute to what I see as the theme. Jesus, Son of God, bringing salvation to the whole world. The reading from the prophet Isaiah reveals God choosing a prophet upon the return of the Israelites from the release from Babylon captivity. This prophet, or as referred to in the reading, servant of God, is tasked not to raise up and restore the survivors of Israel, but also to be the light of all the nations so that God's salvation may reach to the ends of the world. In other words, God tells his prophet, no one is excluded from the salvation of God. Similar to the first reading, St. Paul's greeting to the Corinthians. He first praises them as believers in Corinth and then reminds them that they are only part of the Holy Ones of Jesus Christ, whom are everywhere. 
all believers who call upon the name of, G of the Lord Jesus Christ receive the Lord's grace and his ultimate salvation. This prepares us for the gospel very well. Unlike other gospel authors, John does not spend time with the birth of Jesus or the baptism, but quickly gets to Jesus' mission. To understand this, the sections before our reading today are important, but there are only 28 verses. He does this very, very quickly and very precise. In the first few verses, he declares, the word was with God from the beginning and was God. And God spoke the word and it became flesh and dwelt among us. The glory of the Father's only Son, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Then he also introduced John the Baptist, who was sent by God to provide testimony for the light. And just so you don't get confused in that, from here on, I'm going to refer to John the Baptist as the Baptist. So when I refer to John, that's the, if you will, the author of the, the gospel. So John explains who the Baptist is through a series of questions from the priests, Levites, and the Pharisees from Jerusalem. And the result is that John the Baptist testifies that he is only a man sent by God to identify the Messiah. He is nothing else, nothing else special, not a prophet, not the Messiah. And the amazing thing is he does that in just 28 verses. Our reading today, Jesus is identified, but he doesn't do anything. He only walks towards John the Baptist. We don't know if he interacts with the Baptist or just passes by him. All we know is the testimony of the Baptist to those around him. Based upon this testimony, it appears that Jesus has already been baptized. The Baptist first identifies Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. In a commentary that I was using on the Gospel of John, they say that there's three possibilities for this meaning. The Lamb as the central of the Passover liturgy, the sacrifice of death, being delivered from sin and reconciliation with God. The second one is in the temples, the sacrifices were typically lambs or other animals. And the sacrifice again is for the sins of the people. And the final one comes from Isaiah and it goes along the same theme as the first reading we had, the suffering servant of the Lord who goes to his death to obtain forgiveness again for sins. Sins, so a lamb being led to the slaughter in this case. The main theme of all these is the lamb of God will be sacrificed for our sins. In other words, John is telling us right up front that Jesus will need to die for us. The Baptist reminds, reminds his listeners that Jesus is the word made flesh. And he has seen the Holy Spirit come upon Jesus and remain, which was a sign that God had given him that the identity to the one who was to be the Messiah. Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit, whereas John only baptized with water. To make everything clear, he goes one step further. The Baptist wants everybody to clearly understand. And he says, now I have seen and testified that Jesus is the Son of God. So today in our readings, we have revealed to us that Jesus is the Son of God, who is to bring salvation, not just to the Jewish people, but to the entire world. The Baptist recognizes Jesus Christ because God 
had given him a vision of the Holy Spirit coming down and remaining on the Son of God. As a result, we are baptized in the Holy Spirit and our sins are forgiven when that happens. As the baptized recognize Jesus by the Holy Spirit, let us too start recognizing Jesus Christ in our brothers and sisters. And through the assistance of the Holy Spirit, witness to others about Jesus, the Son of God, who is the salvation of the world. Let's make our profession of faith. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <coughs> As we follow and serve the Lord, let us be his light to all the nations as we offer our prayers. That the church's, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that the church's actions of peace and love demonstrate to the people of the world how to act towards one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we celebrate Martin Luther King Day this coming week, that the world leaders work to fulfill Dr. King's dream for peace. We pray to the Lord. That all people strive to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That lawmakers and healthcare workers advocate to protect the sanctity of life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this faith community receive the Eucharist with reverence and love of our Lord, Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the baptized, that they may testify of our baptismal call through the witness of our daily lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our parish who need prayer and for all who are suffering, that they share the cross of Jesus and may also be anointed with his joy and grace. We pray especially for the eternal joy of Jessica Marie Bolsmiller. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, we know that you hear the prayers that we offer. 
May we be sincere in our hearts and unfailing in our baptismal calling. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, sisters, brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. So with angels and archangels, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end. We acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In 
a similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <coughs> the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. Let us share with each other a sign of peace.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. body of Christ. <clears throat> the body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. God is ready. 
Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Parishioners know that we have had a couple of false starts in reintroducing communion from the cup, and uh, we are confident that we will be able to begin this time, beginning on the weekend of February 2nd and 3rd. So it's very important uh, that you read everything uh, that we send you in preparation for finally reintroducing communion from the cup. You'll receive the special emails, read the bulletin, uh, so that we will be well prepared to know where to walk and where to stand, but also uh, to receive reverently and uh, just with great blessing. Next Sunday, not tomorrow, but the following Sunday, we will once again be hosting an ecumenical service during the uh, uh, prayer uh, or the week of prayer for Christian unity. And I ask you to give serious thought, to actually think, Father said, think about this. Not just, oh, Father's talking about. But Father asked me to think about it, so I will think about it. I will think about making a plan to come and be with people of different churches and ministers and leaders in different churches to pray in, in our Christian unity. That's next Sunday. It's in the bulletin, and let that announcement in the bulletin uh, be the, the little uh, reminder to think about this and choose to, uh, choose to be a part of it. So the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We're going to sing verses 1 and 2 of Though the Mountains May Fall. <laughs> 